fellas, did you used to watch Smash Ultimate and have a good time? Are you kind of bored of Smash Ultimate now? When you watch it, I don't care about you playing it, because it's five years old, of course you're going to be bored of it. But when you watch it, specifically competitive, I get it. I'm the same way. And I would like to talk to you about it, because I think I figured it out. I think I've solved the reason why people are bored of watching Smash Ultimate. And it has nothing to do with the characters. So don't, before you comment below and say that it's Sonic or Steve or Game & Watch or anything like that. It's not that. But while you're down there, please like and subscribe. That I, I had to tell people to like. Apparently, I told people to like in one video, and it, like, shot up the rank. This is why you are bored of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I have three reasons as to why this is the case. And we're gonna go over all of them, okay? But before we do, I think it is prudent to give you a little bit of background. This is about the author. I realized the other day, a few weeks ago, I was at an event, and I was talking with Mutace, top Peach player, best Peach in the world. And he was just like, Coney, I didn't know you used to be good at Smash Brothers. And that really hurt my feelings. He said that he had no idea that I used to be, like, okay at the game. He thought I was always just a figurehead jackass loudmouth, which kind of pissed me off, because I don't think my whole shtick works if it's not predicated on the fact that I used to be somebody, because then I'm just a y I'm just yapping. So let me give you a little bit of background in case you're dumb like Mutace. I'm Coney, as you know. Hi, everybody. I was 17th in the world at one point in Brawl. Now, you're gonna have to believe me on this, because I tried to find the image, but I couldn't find it. I deleted it. This is true. I swear to God, it was not an accurate ranking, but it was a ranking. Listen, there were like 250 Brawl players on the planet, and I was number 17. But what you could do is look up uh, the all-time rank, uh, the all-time Brawl rank, and I was number 84 on that. And I have the receipt here, and please look at my name and none of the other names. I don't think you should look anywhere else. Just look at 84, okay? <laughs> just, just lot, look at that and don't look at anything else. I was pretty good at PM. I, I, was, I was decent enough, okay? I was, you know, I was good. I hated Smash 4 just like everybody else, okay? So we're all on the same team. We all hated that fucking game. It was a filler era, and I pretended to like it for money. That's not true. I like talking about the game competitively, but... I always worry when I say that that people are going to be weird. I hated Smash 4. And also, I am the grand champion of the Grind 57 at Xanadu. And haters will say it's fake, but no, you could look this up right now. I won a Smash Ultimate tournament in 2018. That's the fake local too. But it's not fake. It's just on Friday instead of Tuesday. What do you mean it's fake? I was really good, and I did it with Inkling. Is that a real talent? But I think the number one thing you need to know about me, the, the, the biggest thing, if you know nothing else about me, if you're stumbling on this for the first time and you don't know anything about me, I'm a Smash caster, and uh, I have been here for a very long time. I started playing in, like, 20, 2010, 2009, and I never stopped. Well, that's not true. I did stop playing. But I'm very old, and I've been around for a long time. This is important because I have seen game life cycles. I have seen games rise and then fall. I've seen the sun rise and then the sun set. And I think in Smash Ultimate, we are at a very pivotal time where the game seems to be sundowning a bit. That's not the right word. That's a clinical term. Sunsetting is the better word. Yeah. So all I ask is that you heed my wisdom. The wisdom of the elders. Please hear my call. I have been in video games, or in Smash in particular, for a very long time. And I think there are three reasons in particular why you're bored of Smash Ultimate. And none of them have to do with the characters. A lot of people are going to say it's Steve or Sonic or Game Watch, whatever. Listen, it's not that. I think it's a couple of different things. And I have them ordered here. These are all kind of equally uh, important, but I think that they all kind of play into each other. But the number one reason, this three out of five agenda... What does this mean? Three out of five means you have to win three games before the other person, okay? I don't know if you guys have seen that or have noticed it or have felt the shift, but every tournament now seems to be three out of five. It used to be something that started at like top 32 or 64 or whatever, but it has slowly bled into the entire tournament in some cases, if not, you know, top 128 or 64. Three out of five is becoming increasingly popular at pretty much every American major. And here, let me show you. I looked at all the majors since July, okay? And I looked at all the NA majors because I don't know enough about Japan or what's happening over there, viewership, uh, whatever. And I looked at when best of five starts at all these tournaments. Gommel starts at top 196, top 128 at Smash Factory, top 512 at SmashCon. Everything at Delfino Maza, everything at Rise of Grand, everything at Miami, everything at Port Priority, and top 196 at UFA. So the point is, so many of these sets are three out of five. 
And I don't know if people have realized that this has happened, but it, it has. This, is, this has kind of become the new normal. Japan is trending toward best of five. Okay, so they're trending that way? Okay. I have a reason for that, but I, I don't know what's going on in Japan, so I don't want to talk about it. I took up the last two huge tournaments. One was Port Priority 8. This happened in Seattle, Washington, 710 entrants. All singles were best of five the entire way through. 710 people. How many sets do you think forced a game five? Let's go ahead and say that if a set is 3-1, it doesn't matter. Because somebody would take that game in the two out of three anyway. Obviously, there's an argument to be made that somebody, you know, lost one game and they, uh, but I don't care. Let's say how many sets do you think forced game five? Give me a percent. 570. 12, 10, blah, 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 blah. okay. The answer, and I did all the math for you, 19% of sets went to game five before top eight. And I should have, I, I forgot to clarify this. I am not talking about best of five for top eight because I think top eight should always be best of five. I, don't, I think that's a non-starter. I think top eight should be best of five and I don't want to argue that. So 19%, which isn't bad, right? One in five games about going to game five. I also have the UFA data. At this tournament, uh, best of five started at top 192, I think. How many sets do you think forced the game five here? 19%, 20%, 10%, 30%, blah, 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 blah. Too goddamn many. True, true chatter. Yes, yes. The real answer is in winners, it was 10. This is winner's bracket only, which makes a bit more sense because usually in winner's bracket, especially at top heavy things like this, the winners just kind of run through. In losers, 28. If we have the whole thing, 20 out of 90, 22%. One in five, roughly, okay? The issue I think here doesn't really have to do with the games. I think it's a piece of it, okay? I want you to keep in mind that one in five of those before top eight is going to game five, and we're getting some games that might not necessarily be necessary, right? I mean, if we're going to game four, that's two games, maybe one game that you wouldn't get otherwise. Anything that isn't a 3-0 is adding games, right? But even if it is a 3-0, it's adding at least one game. So no matter what, it's always adding more games for about a fifth of the set. The reason this is important and the reason this is a big deal is actually because of the second issue, which is the timer. I want to give you a little bit of perspective. Street Fighter VI. This is EVO Grand Finals. 23 minutes for this entire set with a reset and game nine. Guilty Gear Strive. There's Leffen again against uh, Nubenheimer? The, 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 whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter who he is. He got blown out. He got blown the fuck out. Seven minutes, complete blowout. Kind of a shutout. Kind of unfortunate. He got kind of smashed out. Mortal Kombat 1 just came out. It's a brand new set. Brand new game, but it's a third game. Wanted to talk about this. The Sonic Fox, they're up against uh, Ninja Killer, I think. Ninja Killer. This is 14 minutes. It's a game five. There's no reset here, but it's 14 minutes for a game five set. Now, Let's talk about the latest Grand Finals. Not the latest, it's not UFA, but let's talk about this game. This is Port Priority game Grand Finals. This is Sonics against Mia. How long do you think this set is? Street Fighter 6 was 23 with a Game 9 reset. Strive was 7 minutes, but that was a blowout. Oh, you can already see it. Yeah, ta-da, 51 minutes. 51 minutes, 8 games. That's not even 9 games or 10 games. Those are two three ones. Now, this isn't the case all the time. Okay, uh, this this doesn't happen all the time. I looked back at uh, the Arkansas tournament that just happened. Rewired Fest and Gluto kind of washed light, stomped him, and beat him about 15 minutes. And uh, that also happened here at UFA. Uh, happened 13 minutes. This is a blowout. I know it says 23, but they had 10 minutes of ceremony, all kinds of stuff, whatever. What I want you guys to think about is the timer is about 7 minutes for Smash. And I don't really think there's a way to get around that. Two stocks feels too low. Three stocks can sometimes feel too big, sometimes not. Depends on what level of play you're at. But if you go lower than seven minutes, it gets bad. If you go higher than seven minutes, it gets bad. And because of the nature of Ultimate, the way that it naturally progresses, keep that in mind, the way that we have built it, it goes about four minutes a game. The reason this is important is because if you look back at all these sets, right? 90 sets, these are going 90 sets that have one extra game in them if you do three out of five, at least. And all of these games have at least four more minutes onto it. A 3-0, even a complete blowout 3-0, will usually take about 15 minutes. And I think the reason that that's an issue is because over a long time, these sets add up. Look at this, 22 minutes, 30 minutes, 19 minutes, 19 minutes, 28 minutes, 20 minutes, 17 minutes. This one's 11, so that's one's a little quicker. So just look at all these sets, right? I think the issue here, at least for me, 
is that as somebody who doesn't just watch top eight, I'm watching all of these sets, and even if it's a total blowout, I'm still watching it for about 15 minutes. And I think that gets kind of exhausting over time. Majors use quad streams, though. That's going to stream everything within the confines of that round of the bracket, but it can't. you can't go into the future and play future brackets. You can only play that round. So even if you have quad streams, you're not going through the tournament faster. You're still in that round of bracket. The point is that even fast games of Smash are 15 minutes which means that over time, if you're watching Top 64 or 32 or whatever else, you just get sleepy. You're a tired Mario. Woo, spaghetti, ravioli. So sleepy. Scroll up. Guys, this isn't... You guys don't know how technology... I'm in Photoshop. This is not scrollable. There's no... This doesn't go anywhere beyond. I could just make it longer. There's nothing else here. You can see 16, 20... Uh, oh my God, is that 20 minutes or 28? If that's 28 minutes of Roy Kirby, I would, I would throw myself into the ocean. And I think the reason this is important is by the time you get to top eight, you have seen so much fucking Smash Brothers. Because even the quick sets, even the three O's, even the ones that are immediate, still take 15 minutes. Now, that wouldn't matter, I think, so much if not for this third thing. The biggest issue, I think, and I think I've said that for all these, but the biggest issue this time, for real, it's the fucking stages, man. It's... The stage list, which I think is just as much a culprit as these. I have seen so much PS2 and I can't get you stage data. You guys will have to just trust me on this. I don't know how to find it. Source my eyeballs. The source is my eyeballs. I've seen so much green and astroturf on the fucking, on the PS2 stage. You get it. You've seen it, okay? Let me go ahead and show you something. This is a site that shows you stage data, okay? It's tournameta.com stage comparison. Great resource, okay? This is every legal stage in Ultimate as it is right now. If you just look at the stage list for Port Priority and a lot of other ones, okay? Kalos? Well, Kalos wasn't at Port Priority, but yeah, if you want to add Kalos, it's that. The point is that it looks kind of similar all the way through. Like, a lot of the ceilings look the same. The pink one is Battlefield, which is a little bit higher, but a little bit shorter on the sides. PS2 is a little bit longer on the sides, but a little bit shorter up top. That's why you see... Touch of death characters like Super Mario do his shit. Look at the blast zone width. 500 to uh, 460 on Smashville. 40 point difference between PS2, which is the longest, and Smashville, which is the shortest. Blast zone height. PS2 has the shortest ceiling. Uh, meanwhile, what stage is the highest battlefield? Yeah. Which is even less, which is, what, a 27 point difference? Kind of all packed in. All these stages are very packed in in the same. Can we agree that there's not much difference? It looks like there's only three stages. Can we agree that this is not that, th these stages are kind of similar? I'm gonna hit a button, and this button may shock and dismay some of you in chat, it may disturb you, but this button says controversial. <laughs> this is Kony's perfect world. I don't know if you see this pink line in here. That's WarioWare Inc. That is a tiny stage. When you hit that controversial button and you add WarioWare, Look at that fucking difference. Many people would say you have a bad stage, and I understand. I completely understand why people don't want to play on the stage and they don't want to engage with this kind of argument. I completely understand. Please hear me out. So WarioWare creates this new scenario where the ceiling is actually higher than most stages. It's not higher uh, than, than Halberd, <laughs> which is also on, by the way. This might be a bad idea. Halberd might... I don't know if I should turn on Halberd. There actually might be problems with this that I don't know. I'm going to be honest. Halberd was just... I was trying to come up with four stages for this, and uh, I, I thought of Halberd. You could shark under here and go through it. That might be problematic. I picked Friggin' Orpheum, which has kind of normal blast zones, but it has a very different stage layout. A lot of people will say, wait a minute, that's a wall. That's not allowed. And I would say, hey, I get it but I think it should be. When this goes down, it creates a wall right there. It just creates a big area that says, don't go here. Creates uh, quite a difference in terms of stage layout. The point is that these stages disrupt the current homogeny of all the other stages. I'm a big fan of Yoshi's Island. It's a little bit tighter in the middle, and it has a ceiling that's a little bit lower, but it has that big platform on top. I think having that platform on top which is basically an extended Smashville platform, creates really weird scenarios where somebody could get under it and create so much pressure, and then it just, you kind of disincentivize jumping in a lot of ways because you don't want to be up here. The point is that we have so many stages in the game and we don't use them, and instead what we have 
are these stages that are non-controversial, that are big, that lead to long games, people living a very long time. I think adding stages forces new perspectives and new risks into the game. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it also on YouTube in case people haven't seen it. Everybody talks about WarioWare, and they say, well, characters are going to kill at 20. Everybody says, well, the sides are so close, people will kill early. That's the thing, Chatter. Everybody kills early. Both of them have to deal with it. And if you don't like it, you can ban it. And a lot of people say, well, if something gets banned, it's not worth having on the list. I don't think that's true. I think it's worth having a stage on to waste a ban. We've had it before. Lilat was on for a long time as the bastard child who had to be banned so we could have even striking. There's a precedent for this. That's kind of how it is. My point here isn't to be controversial, even though I hit the controversial button, I know. I understand that I am the viewer and I am a little bit more predisposed to uh, variation, <laughs> let's say. I think it is from my grounding in being a Brawl player where we had counter picks, and I think that we have stages in Ultimate that ultimately just kind of feel the same. And every time I say this, I get flamed. And listen, I'm not a pro player. I, I'm not saying that you guys are wrong. But from where I'm sitting, I feel like these stage lists incentivize long games with lots of space in it, little variance between them. Like Small Battlefield and PS2. Are we fucking kidding here? I know it's different. I know that they're different, but come the fuck off. Low risk, I think, comparatively, because you get to make more mistakes, you get to live longer. There's not many interesting choices you get to make. It's just like platforms or no platforms. Do I want to have 10 degrees of variance in, in top blast zone? Do I want to have 30% uh, more narrow side? It just doesn't. The most interesting choice you can make sometimes is can I get a wall jump on Kalos? And that's not even legal here. Kalos isn't even legal in a lot of places. It's fucked up that Kalos is interesting because there's walls. So you can see Diddy do the thing where he does the jump into the banana flip. Like, that's sad. How did we get there? Now, I think the biggest issue, and this is where I come back around to saying it's not because of the characters. The stages that we've put together and the game that we have crafted has created something. A system that helps these guys. Wallman, who gets his best materials on all these stages, particularly PS2, by the way. Jungle Man, who gets huge platforms that you can't get down from, and he hits neutral air and up air and keeps you in the air the entire time. Run Man, who has the entire length of the stage until he gets to pick when he attacks you. He gets to choose when he paces the neutral. And worst of all to me, the fantastic spinning surprise killing robot. This guy is huge and he kills randomly. This dude is a fucking monster. He just spins around and you die at 60. He is the devil. The reason that's important is because in all these stages, people live way longer. People live forever, but not against Rob because he's going to land that side B if he gets one good read and then you're dying at 50. And people will say, yeah, he'll be able to do that on WarioWare. You're absolutely right. He will be able to do that. And so will a lot of other people. It creates an environment where things are very risky. And if you don't want to play at that risk, that's fine. Completely. That's fine. Just ban it. However, I would say full DSR. Coney children don't know DSR. Okay, let's talk about DSR. There's modified DSR and full DSR. Modified DSR means the stage you just won on, you can't go back to. So let's say it's a best of five set. Somebody wins on Battlefield. They can't go back to Battlefield until they win on a different stage. Full DSR means once you've one on a stage, you can't go back ever. Does Ultimate not have DSR? It has modified usually. I think full DSR with this stage list would be fantastic. You can't just cheese somebody on WarioWare three times. Maybe you could sneak in a game. And if it's two out of three, you could sneak in a game if you really want to put your fucking tournament life on the line in this kind of environment. And no gentleman. -ing. Yeah, but stopping people from doing gentlemen is so hard to do. Like, how do you... It's hard to do that, so... I personally think that variation in stages would allow for more interesting choices. And maybe that's just me. I think the game that we have developed and that we have built has these characters standing at the top, and it is the prison that we have created for ourselves. I think that this would be uh, a lot more fun to watch. I think there'd be a lot more variation. I think that two out of three games would, leading up to top eight, would mean that you're not getting sick of these characters before you even get to the best ones. There's also arguments to be made that this means that tournaments don't need to be three days, which saves money for uh, TOs. Maybe you just do two days now. 
If it's that much shorter, I don't know. I don't run tournaments. I don't know the logistics. There might be an argument there. How do you feel about Sundays not just being top eight? I'm a top 32 guy. I like top 32s on Sundays. Some people like just top eights on Sundays. Some people like the full day on Sunday. I think top 32 is a great sweet spot because the players get to warm up through their matches and not just start cold on eight against the hardest people in the tournament. But top like 128 on the last day is fucking exhausting. It's like 10 hours of gameplay. Now, I know that I'm sounding very silly here. I know that I'm throwing out a lot of radical suggestions about what I think would help the game in terms of uh, at least me being a little bit more invested, and I think other people, because again, what I really want to lock into you guys, and I don't know if I'm doing a good job of doing that, it is not just the top eight. It is all of these sets. You are watching entire 128s, 192s, entire tournaments of three out of fives on PS2 over and over and over. Wow, let's switch it up. Oh my God, they're on Smashville. Smashville is a big deal now. Smashville and Hollow Bastion feel uh, remarkable in this meta. I think you're watching set after set after set of the same thing. The characters make it interesting because you do see a wide variation of characters to a point. And then you're going to get to like, I don't know, 16, 8, whatever. So I really want to drill in the fact that this is not just a top 8. Top 8 should always be 3 out of 5, period. But it's fatigue over watching the length of the tournament. Does a weird stage list solve these issues entirely? No, Sonic is still good, Steve is still good, there's still a lot of, not overpowered, but there are still a lot of powerful characters that are going to dominate, no matter what. And I don't think we should change the stages to explicitly nerf or buff anybody, anything like that. This is not a shot at Game & Watch or Steve or Sonic, seriously, it's not. It is more so a reaction to how the meta has progressed throughout all of Ultimate, throughout a community that wants to play long games, wants to make the most mistakes, want to play as much as possible with as big a stage and as long a time as they can. The thing is, these stages don't solve these issues, and in fact, they make new ones. Oh shit, there's a wall on Frigate now. WarioWare. Can't pick that against Roy. Double-Edged Dance is killing me at five. Yoshi's Island against Game & Watch? Fuck me till I die. Because you are stuck on top of that platform forever. You're getting goldfished into up air over and over and over, okay? Who's somebody you could, you could who sucks at, uh, at getting ledge trapped? Who can go under? Sora? Oh, dude. Yeah, maybe we have to ban this because of Sora. <laughs> I don't know if any of them are good. I'm just spitballing. My point is that... It's an idea. We have 90 stages or whatever. Let's try something. These are, I think, the three reasons that you're bored of Ultimate. I think you're getting more games that take longer on the same stages again and again and again. It's watching top 32 days, and these sets are going to game five, but every single match takes five minutes, and then by game five, you sometimes you know who's going to win, and then you got to watch the whole thing. It's a formality. It seems like there's a difference between players and spectators and what they want. Aha! Hold on. Kimona. You're onto something. Here's the thing. This is why I think you are bored of Ultimate. And maybe I'm projecting because this is how I feel. I'm just throwing it out there, spitballing on my thoughts. Here's the thing. What should we do now? We're five years into a game. It's 2023. What should we do about the rule set? Nothing. Don't change it now. Do not change anything about the rule set now. The game is five years old. Ultimate also has ridiculous variants already that make it very stressful to play at in tournaments. Players have to travel and spend thousands of dollars to cross country to fight a Bowser Jr. and then they get hit by that weird shield break setup where it hits your shield and then drops and then lose their money. That's annoying. The current rule set favors players. And this is the important thing that Kimona brought up. The players are favored here, not the viewers. Who the fuck are you to ask for anything different? You're just a viewer. You went into my video and now I got you to agree with my wacky crazy rule set. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? I'm not spending any money competing in this in this game. I'm not dealing with the stressors of being a competitor. I, my livelihood isn't on whether or not I should win the game. So who the fuck am I to make this distinction, especially this late in the game? New metas do not necessarily mean better metas. Maybe we add WarioWare or Frigate or any of these stages and it totally fucks shit up. Maybe Hero becomes unstoppable. I don't know, and you don't either. It might be awful. And I think the most important thing, the better player should be rewarded for being more skilled in the game that we've built. This red part is especially important. 
we have currently built a system that incentivizes the better player in the game that we built now to win the long set over a long time. I think an important thing to note here is that players are sick of the game too. I think this is a part of it too though. They're fighting more Sonic. It takes longer. Would they be annoyed if Sonic kills them with forward air at 40 on WarioWare? Yeah, maybe, but then they get to kill Sonic with with forward air at 60, so it's it's about even. Everybody is so pessimistic about these stages. They're like, oh, but I'll die. The fuck is your problem? Do it back. Pick Sonic if you're that scared. So the point of all of this is to emphasize that we built this game, and this is the game that we have created. But I want you to keep this video in mind. Because what I have seen, remember how I said earlier that I've been around for a long time? I see this happen every fucking game. Somebody will think about the last game and they won't really learn anything from it. Every new Smash game brings new players, newcomers that don't have the history or the knowledge or the background to know what happened in the last game and don't have the experience to understand how these things all, cl how all kind of clink together and snap into place. Chat. I don't know if you know this, you guys are now the veterans. I think a lot of you probably started with Ultimate. A lot of you maybe started watching my stream during Ultimate. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. A lot of you watching from YouTube probably started with Ultimate. That's great. I'm so happy to have you. You are now old. You have seen this happen. You have watched what happens as a game's roaring flame turns into dying embers. You need to keep this in mind because the next game will come out. Smash 6 is coming out at some point. Point. I don't know what it'll be or what it, this is not a leak. <laughs> this is not a leak, everybody. I'm not leaking the game. Just to be clear, I'm not working with <laughs> I'm not working with Sakurai. But the next Smash game will come out. I want you to remember this if you don't take away anything else from this. Nintendo doesn't make this game. We make this game. Old corny ass? No, I don't mean this. Hold on. Let me be clear. I don't mean this in a wholesome, like, yeah, our community. I mean this as in, we fucked up. Nintendo puts the game out, and then we create it, and we fucked it up. We just bungled the whole thing because we wanted the players. Oh, you guys want more games? Okay, here's more games. Three out of five. Oh, you guys only want five stages on? Oh, okay, here you go. Th th more stages. Please come to my tournament. Okay. I'm not saying this in a wholesome, like, wow, I love this community. I'm saying this in a way that you guys are so fucking scared of change or for anything to be different that we've created a system where I'm seeing the same stages and the same fucking characters over and over and over. Blaming TOs? Yeah, it's their fault. It's fucking millionaires. Maybe a top player doesn't show up at your tournament and you lose $100. You're already making $500,000 for hosting Genesis. Who cares? I'm gonna get a DM from Bobak later. That's not true. That's not true. I'm joking. I'm not true. TOs aren't rich, I think. I don't know if that's... It might be true. I don't know. In the prison of the mind, it is we who forge our own shackles. Now we are here in our own mind prison, sitting alongside Steve, Sonic, and Mr. Game & Watch. I hope you like your spot, because you're going to be in it for a while. Thank you all for watching. Drake's in the chat, and please subscribe. Thank you, everybody. That's why you're bored of Smash Ultimate. Maybe the reason you guys are bored of watching Smash tournaments is because I'm not casting them anymore. Maybe that's what it is, because I'm not there. And I get it, man. I understand.